This is a cow udder. Inside each udder, there's a motor that vibrates. And you don't know which one's vibrating, and you have to milk the one that's vibrating. So you're frantically reaching and milking while your competitor is trying to milk their udder. Would you consider this an architectural toy? I don't think so. I'm sorry. No, that, that's interesting. <laughs> I teach a class here also that's called Architecture in Play, and I have the students design toys, architectural toys. What is an architectural toy then? Maybe a building toy, a, a toy that's about construction. The rules of the toy are imbued within the object. The making of space is is the aim of the game. There's something about play that's tacit knowledge. So for me, rather than really talking about games, and games really involve rules, uh, toys perhaps is more appropriate here because it's something that involves a hands-on. I find that if a student is trying to design something and it's very difficult to do, it's often, and they're having resistance, it's often the actual the, the, the goal that's hard. This, this group, they were designing an arcade box that had lots and lots of complicated things and it really wasn't working. And they made this thing, right? And then what they did is once they had this, this object, this is a toy, once they had this object, then they formed all kinds of games using this object. I feel like there's a mentality that often that you just, you have to like bear down and there's only one way and it's very cerebral and I want to impart a, a sense of freedom. Play is utterly serious and I think you have to keep that lack of rigidity I think to be able to make these adjustments and I think that's that's the key. But you know it's amazing to see students who are so afraid to let go of in architecture of the abstraction. God forbid there's a little person in the game, yes. you know, and God forbid there's something that looks too cute, you know, so so they have to let go. But then there's a challenge on whether what you're doing is serious, mm -hmm. right? It's like, well, why are you making toys? Why right. are you designing buildings? Or why are you making things that are going to help people, right? What can I endorse as a, as a professor? One of my toy classes, I asked the students to perhaps represent a city in a toy for the blind. One city that it, uh, one of the students chose was Aleppo. Actually, the toy pieces were pieces of Aleppo. It was so great to suddenly see Aleppo again and to deconstruct it and put it back together. You know, a lot of things are much more accessible through play. I think that's what distinguishes it. For example, if you're gonna build an incubator that's gonna keep a baby alive. If you are not versed in it, Nobody could actually tell you whether you've done a good job mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. As a sort of a layman, you're like, oh, that, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. And That's then you walk true. away, and there's a barrier. But with games, everybody knows. And so it's, it's kind it's of more exactly. accessible. I think in general, humor is important in education, whatever field you teach in and however you teach it. There's modes of play that I think should be in comp included everywhere. But the subject of play, I think that's really the place for higher education to really engage in and to embrace.